What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm back here in the bunker because I'm sharing five of the biggest things that I've been working on down here to help me with my game over the past year. If you ever find yourself in this situation where you got ball in hand and on the first ball you lose shape and throw it all away? How about let's say when you run them all out but then you end up dogging the eight ball shape? These are situations I found myself in a lot that I specifically worked on to try and get better, mainly using the hill hill game. I'm down here ready to share five of the biggest lessons that I've learned that I preach all the time to my players and in my matches about myself to try and get better and not land in these situations. And I will say the last one is probably the most important and it's something I brought up in my last video if you've been paying attention. Let's jump into the first one though guys. Let's go. First, attacking trouble. Now oftentimes, whether or not a ball's in trouble and how difficult you find it is kind of subjective. Some people say some are easier than others. But for the sake of the argument here, this ball on the long rail is trouble. I bring it up all the time. If there's a ball on the long rail that does not go in the side pocket, guys, that is trouble. So the first thing you should do with ball in hand is get rid of trouble. If I get ball in hand, I'm going straight to this ball that's stuck on the long rail almost every single time. If not first, second, which I'll get into here in a second. I'll see some of the guys I play pool with and they'll save this ball. And I'm always saying, you know, well, what was your plan? And they always have a plan to eventually get back to it. No, I can easily get back to that ball. And I'm telling you guys, until we are Fargo 650s, 600s and better, it's harder to get back on these balls. And if you are that player, then you already know it's better off to try and get rid of it when you can. If you try and save it, it gets difficult, especially if you try and shape the north side of this ball and sending it past the side pocket and both points of it. This is not good, man. You gotta get rid of this stuff first. Now, sometimes I do like to get a little greedy and I won't go for it directly with ball in hand. Sometimes there's some balls that can get you towards that. Most of the time, if it's this specific trouble ball, if they're stuck on the rail, you can use a side pocket shot and kind of roll forward onto the long rail. That's always an option and it's something that I'm looking towards when if I don't ever get ball in hand and I'm trying to find a way to get over there. But sometimes with ball in hand, I just want to start getting things out of the way. So I'll take an easy shot to get there. But warning, man, trying to get too greedy. In this example, when I try and take two balls ahead of that, I immediately lose shape. And now I'm jutted right towards that ball and I already messed it up. I'm telling you, the more balls that you put into a run, the more things are going to fall apart in our amateur level, man. I'm telling you. Ah! Number two of techniques that I've gotten better with over the past year, rail shot position. Let's take a look at this situation where you got two stripes and you're trying to run out. You got ball in hand. Where would you put the cue ball based on their, these three positions to get shape from the 15 to the 14? I'll give you a second to think about it, but playing pool with my friends, I notice my friends oftentimes give themselves such a wider angle. Playing with my buddies and we're running these scenarios out and playing this game, they always want to give themselves a wider angle than I feel is necessary. So I always dial it in a little bit, and that's what I'm trying to offer to you today. Oftentimes, you're gonna get much better results by keeping the angle flatter than what you think. Now, in reality, we all know all three of these positions are gonna work just fine, and even wider than that is gonna work just fine. But what I've learned that might be very obvious to a lot of you guys out there, the wider you make it, the softer you gotta shoot this ball. If you just make it tighter and keep that angle more narrow, you can really let your stroke out and have a much larger room for error and not roll your cue ball off. Let's look at a card, Abby Normal. This is one of my arch nemeses. This card is very difficult no matter how many times I practice it. But what it does teach you is how to keep that cue ball close to the rail. So now you've got two balls on either side. You want to keep the cue ball as tight as you can to that long rail and not let it come out. But with every shot, it's going to kind of come out more and more. You have a duck sitting in the side pocket to bring you back in when you need it. And this is one that I see people a lot when they're shooting this, they take the very first, their, your ball in hand shot and they make it super wide and you immediately lose shape. You'll see with every ball I shoot here, my cue ball just keeps coming wider and wider and wider. So you can't start wide, man. So you gotta start narrow and tight in the rail if you're gonna be shooting balls back and forth along the long rail, which does, that pattern comes up a lot in eight ball, guys. When I figured out to keep it narrow so I can really stroke the ball instead of constantly leaving myself these sharp angles where I have to baby it down the rail, increase my run out percentage almost immediately, guys. I'm telling you, this, this is more important than it might seem here. Set up this card yourself and work on it. Let me know what you think.
Number three, drifting with rail shots. Now this is the exact opposite. You don't wanna stay on the rail and starting to have an understanding of how to get across the table and the speed at which it takes getting across the table based on your angle. So essentially leaving yourself more angle, but not with the intent to stay on the rail to get to the other side. I've mentioned this in some of my other videos, but I've made a simplified yo-yo drill part of my routine every time when I go to get down on the table if I have time and people aren't rushing me to start a league. All I do is set up balls on either side and I just practice going back and forth and back and forth. And it does a couple things. One, it helps me get the speed of the table down as to how bouncy these rails are and start to dial in my speed because I know what it usually takes based on the angle to get across. And two, it just starts getting me down to making a tough ball on the rail, which practicing this enough, these balls don't become as tough as they used to be. I promise you that. I've honestly gotten to the point that I actually favor these sometimes as my key ball to get to where I need to get to for the eight, knowing damn well I know how to get across the table based on certain angles. Locking in that relationship between the angle that you have and the speed it takes to get across the table, almost like a lag speed, like understanding what a lag is, the strength you have to hit it. The same thing with these angles, knowing what that feels like to come across the table, huge. Make your runout percentage go way up and it adds so many extra patterns that you can play in your runouts. Mess around with a simplified yo-yo drill, get that feel down as to what it takes to get across the table, then mess with this card. This is drift. This is a little bit of both of the last two things we talked about. The first shot or two, at least how I run it, is making a tight, narrow angle to keep yourself along the rail, but at the same time, leaving yourself enough and know the strength it takes to get across to the other side, then run the rest out. Use the yo-yo drill to start to get that speed down if, you, if you're not familiar with that yet, then mess with this card, keeping the angle tight to stay along the rail when you need to, and to know the speed and the angle to get across to the other side. This is a fun one, guys. Having these things down open up options for patterns and different things that you'll see when you're running the table out. Brings us to number four, getting creative. Now this is just the fun part of eight ball, man. With nine ball, you don't get to choose the balls that you're going for next. You don't get to make a lot of decisions. In eight ball, you get to make decisions and it opens up a lot of opportunities to get creative. Check out this card, for example. This is Limbo, a case where you got three balls tied up in the middle, and technically the two stripes do go in the corner pockets, but they're also pointed directly at a sitting duck in the other side. These kind of situations will come up with combos pointed at easy balls. Hit it the right way, and your run out becomes child's play. I beg you, when you use a combo in eight ball, don't plan on shooting the ball that you're using to combo with. Always have a backup plan. Shoot that, but with a plan to shoot something else. In this case, we got a sitting duck right behind us that we can get to, no big deal. But I gotta warn you, Shooting combos and being able to control the ball you're using to combo is pretty advanced a lot of the time and can get very tricky. A lot of nuanced stuff with that. Same thing with breakouts, guys. Breaking out balls and trying to shape them perfectly, always have a backup plan for what you're really gonna go for and not what you're crashing into. Which brings us to number five, the most important part that I've been talking about the whole time. But first, I just wanna say thank you guys for being here. I make these videos because I'm passionate about the game and I only get to play once or twice a week. So when I'm not playing, I'm usually making videos like this and trying to share the things that I'm learning as I get through the game to try and help other people that might be trying to figure this stuff out too. Besides videos like this, the other videos I put out are full matches where I'm going through, talking about each of these decisions, talking about these patterns that I'm laying out right here, decisions that are being made and drawing it all out on the table as we go to see if I'm making the wrong call as we go. I always invite you guys to add your comments and I've learned so much from a lot of you guys teaching me through comments and leaving me pointers as we go. So one last time, thank you guys for being here. Let's get into number five, the key ball. What's the point of running six or seven balls out if you're just gonna dog the eight ball shape, man? Gosh, I've been doing this for a long time and I've never been happy with the shape that I get on the eight ball, but I changed a few things. One, I try and identify exactly where the good eight ball shape is. And two, I try and pick the right key ball. In my last match, I talked about how I had an aha moment recently about eight ball shape and how to visualize it. 
How are you getting position? If you straight draw from there, it's, it's gonna be very close. You might, you might bump the eight if you straight draw from this. So I think it's okay to roll forward. But shots like this, which is something I think I might bring up, I might make a video about. I've gotten better at getting position on shots like this. Yeah, that was unfortunate. And make a note of that is what kind of spurred me making this video in the first place. And I'm adding some other stuff in there too, but this is really the key point. Oftentimes guys, the eight ball and the nine ball, the money balls are gonna be sitting near the rack after the break. Not all the time, you get action, especially if you're doing the second ball break. But a lot of times, the position for the eight ball is gonna be near the rack. And how many times have I underestimated the position on this ball and I've always come up short for a long time? What I changed in my game and I'm inviting you to do is to walk your sweet butt around the table and take a look exactly where that eight ball goes. Spoiler alert, guys, when it's sitting near the rack, the position for the eight ball is almost always down near the side pocket. It's way more down than you think it is. And if you actually lay eyes on it and really try and focus and hit that spot on the rail, you're gonna end up with better eight ball shape. Guys, I've gotten so many straight in eight balls and nine balls in the past few months. Very happy with this little adjustment that I made in my game. Set up an easy drill like this with a couple balls with an eight ball on the rack and practice getting down here on good shape on this eight ball. If you're constantly coming up short for the eight ball shape, focusing on this point of the rail right here will hopefully help you as much as it helped me getting straight in money balls. Lastly, choosing the right key ball for you. Oftentimes the key ball is obvious and not a decision you get to make, but the beauty of eight ball is you get to kind of choose and make decisions based on what you like to do to get to the eight ball. I've gone through several positional shots in this video alone and there's hundreds more. Know what you're comfortable with and how you like to get to the eight ball and put some focus on that. Don't just underestimate it and just have a loose plan. Know that that is your ball and the plan that you have you're comfortable with. We all know that the money ball brings its own nerves, but we often underestimate the key ball. It's way more important if you're gonna get good eight ball shape. If you get a strain in eight ball, there's no nerves on that at all. So don't underestimate the key ball and making the right choice for you to get to where you wanna to get to. Selecting and playing the right key ball that's right for you is the difference between you reaching up and taking money off that light when you're done, or you reaching in your wallet and going back to the ATM for the next round, I'm telling you. Now I brought up Abby Normal before, and I said that that ball in the side pocket is great to bring you back to the long rail. But if I'm playing this perfectly and I hit this right, I save that ball for the key ball because that to me is the easiest ball to get up and around two rails to get to the eight ball. How about the Dendron card? If you play it like I do, you're gonna to get to this exact point where you gotta make a decision on which one of these balls you want to be your key ball. I personally like the sitting duck as the key ball. And if you're not comfortable shooting the sitting duck to get anywhere on the table, check out my other video where I hit several, several, several different positional plays you can make off of that duck ball. Another good example of a ball that I specifically choose for a key ball is this one. I always choose this ball for the key ball because I know from a lot of different spots on the table, I'm comfortable scooting and getting my butt over to that long rail with the cue ball. And these are just a couple examples of specifically choosing the cue ball and not underestimating and having all your focus on the eight ball. I guarantee if you put just as much focus on the cue ball as you do the eight ball, you're gonna see your runout percentage. That last little bump you need to run the whole thing out, it's gonna go up, guys. I'm telling you right now. That'll do it for this video, guys. I hope people in my league do not watch this because I see these mistakes come up all the time. They might be from me too. I'm still working on things, guys. Let me know what you think of this video and I'll catch you in the next one, man. Keep shooting.